بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and our guest uh, this evening is the son of an icon who till this day commands respect and popularity all over the world uh, in Saudi Arabia Hashim Amla Nelson Mandela they share the popular rating with this icon alhamdulillah and uh, carrying the South African uh, flag and the firebrand still lives on perhaps uh, Anisali I think we should play a clip and give the people a clue who this guest is who is his father so uh, here we go um, ladies and gentlemen now is your opportunity um, we should be passing out the sheets of papers any question that you have please uh, address it to either um, the Reverend Jimmy Swaggart or brother Ahmed Didat Ahmed Didat does the glorious Quran exist in its original and pure form and were the originals in fact burned there is an Osmani Quran you know and the Khalifa Osman brother Swagat mentioned something about variant readings <coughs> that Osman had those variant readings burned and uh, to give an example from his own speech if somebody was shorthand right you know, taking down notes of brother Swagat's speech he mentioned a number of names he was actually mutilating them we forgive him because then it's an Ottoman or something like that when it's saying Usman he said something about Omar which sounds most horrible we are not taking you know, exception to that because this is you are not used to the, our names but the person who's taking shorthand and you reproduce that you'll never be able to connect that you were talking about Osman the third caliph of Islam or you're taking about talking about Omar the second caliph of Islam Hafsa you pronounce it correctly so in that case if I was going through the notes I can see you all intrigued and uh, you know even watching the young engineer here putting his head down and really focusing on uh, the voice of Sheikh Ahmadi that you know a voice uh, that stood the test of time and alhamdulillah with me having the privilege of being his editor uh, working very closely with him in Cape Town I remember the tour um, I actually, you know, was slapped with him, uh, with Saleh Muhammad. I saw Sheikh did that, where you have never seen him like that before, but perhaps uh, uh, more about that a little later on. But you have guessed, you have guessed who is my guest this evening in the station. And he's none other than uh, Yusuf Ahmad Didat, the only surviving, I think, uh, child of Sheikh Ahmad Didat because uh, Ibrahim passed away. Um, and the other sister many years ago, Ibrahim, I think 2011, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill the cupboard with nur. We're talking about Mahawa, even uh, Sheikh Ahmad Didat. And uh, as I said, I uh, I worked very closely with Yusuf Didat and always, alhamdulillah, hold him in high esteem. Yusuf Didat, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and shukran jazeelan for joining us uh, this evening. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, uh, Yusuf, I think uh, your mic, okay, can, uh, perhaps I can push it to you, okay, and alhamdulillah, yes, uh, Yusuf knows his sound because uh, when uh, I remember at IPC, he was in charge of the video department and he made sure that he brought in the f first grade equipment. I remember e Mnet coming in one day, Mnet in 1989, these were they're supposed to be the, the, the leading, uh, you know, broadcasting, uh, TV broadcasting channel. But when he ca they came to the IPCI and when they saw the equipment there, they fell flat on the back. And it was uh, the same use of the that who managed to get that equipment, you know, from where. Alhamdulillah, a little later we'll talk about that. Yes, uh, use of the that uh, earlier you informed me that uh, you had many things to reveal this evening. And some of them are being that uh, 
you have views about the death in Saudi Arabia and the refugees in Germany or going into Europe, and what you found about your father in July 2015, 10 years later, and uh, you will, inshallah, later on we will uh, discuss those words with you. And inshallah, please listen attentively for the first hour because we will be giving you a chance to interact with Yusuf D. That uh, calling in, uh, sending your text messages, and uh, yes, uh, the studio number we'll give a little later on. And uh, perhaps if you want to text, we can uh, allow you to text from now. The text number will be 073-154-7604, 073-154-7604. And, you know, when Yusuf Dida told me that 10 years later he discovered the last words spoken by his dad. Now, Yusuf, I think uh, the wise words of Hazrat Ali when he says, um, the good man lives though he may be transported to the land of the dead. Alhamdulillah, the good man, the orator, the selfless servant of Islam, Sheikh Ahmad Didat, still lives on, Yusuf. Ameen, ameen, ya Rabbul Alameen. Jazakumullah khair. (coughs) Yes, my brother, it is now been 10 years since the passing away of my beloved father, may Allah grant his soul with barakah. Ameen. Rahmatullah. 8th of August 2005 was the day he passed away. Mm. And right at his deathbed, at that hour, I was standing in front of him and communicating with him. And Brother Shafat, you have visited my father with your dear wife and you noticed how he communicated mm. with, a, with a chart of alphabets where I, ro- I read out the alphabets and he blinked his eye and identified letters that formed words and from words, it became sentences. And nine years communicating with my father made me really, really good. But on the day he passed away, that very second, he began to communicate with me. He told me, talk, I want to talk. Mm. So I said, okay, daddy, row one, row two, row three, row four. And he blinked his eye. And I read out the alphabets and he spoke the words T-A-K-E, take. Mm. And that was it. I'm I'm asking my father, take what? Take your estate? Mm. Take take what? And next minute, after a while, he just passed away. And it pondered me for 10 years. It pondered me. What did my father mean when he said take? And I couldn't find any solutions or answers to that. So in June 2015, I was going through his papers, his files. And I was going through a file of a minister from Abu Dhabi. And going through his letters, I found a letter that attracted me because my father's signature was on that letter. And for nine years, I remember my father couldn't sign. Mm. He couldn't eat. He could not swallow the saliva that accumulated in his mouth. And I saw that signature and I said, Subhanallah, this is my father's signature. Alhamdulillah. And I turned the next page and out came out a card. Mm. A card came out. So I looked at this card. This, This is a white card. A memory card, you call it. And Brother Shafat, you are aware of this card. Mm. I think when you worked for the Islamic Propagation Gee. Center, one of the advisors of my father was... Yeah, you had to, uh, you know, write the ayat of the Quran and the English uh, equivalent, uh, keep in your pocket. And wherever, when I was traveling by train or any uh, mode of transport you used, you had to buy a heart the uh, ayat. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And I saw this card and in my father's handwriting, in Arabic as well. It starts off with, mm. Anta wali fi dunya wal akhirah. Thou art my protector in this world and the hereafter. Subhanallah. That's what my father used to always pick it up. Anta wali fi dunya wal akhira. Anta wali fi dunya wal akhira. Anta wali fi dunya. Repeat. Oh, he can't remember again. He picks it up again. But the next word that followed through, and I saw, it said, Take, T A K E, thou my soul at death. Allah Akbar. As one submitting to thy will as a Muslim, and unite me with the righteous. Surah Yusuf, chapter 12, verse 101. Hmm. Brother, 
I went cold. Mm-hmm. I said, Alhamdulillah, this is what my father was telling Malik al Mot. Take thou my soul at death as one submitting to thy will as a Muslim and unite me with the righteous. And he passed away. Allahu Akbar. Beautiful. So these, these discovery, I just came into light in June 2015. Mm. And I say, subhanAllah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's revealing so much to us every day. And I'm making shukr for that, my brother Shafa. Yusuf, you know, uh, very graphic, uh, very revealing indeed. And Alhamdulillah, you know, you have a knack of, uh, you know, putting things across or messages across in a manner that is so appealing to the soul. It's also appealing to the ear. And Alhamdulillah, you did speak from your soul. And, you know, with a man being so selfless, because I, I recall in 1989, when we received a letter from, uh, I think it was the Philippines, uh, Yusuf, Gee. after we gave the d that Swagger, uh, uh, at that time it was videos, to a church. Gee. And the entire congregation, the priest and his 2,000 congregants accepted Islam. Yes. And I rep- uh, remember going up to your father and saying, look at this, it hit headlines. And in his humility, you know, I was amazed what he told me. He said, Beta, this is the will of Allah. We don't need any publicity. Don't tell anyone. Just leave it in the hands of Allah. And th- that humility, inshallah, even when you go into the YouTube today, the people are mesmerized with I the mean, message I that mean, that has given. I mean, and also, he was unique. You know, you remember Swagat Swagat, and he was unique in his, but that was unique in his mannerism, in that uh, when he presented uh, the message, he didn't pull back. And no one has that capability you know, Didat had the capability of coming into your own house and shouting at you. I mean, no one will ever get away with yes, that. that. But Alhamdulillah, Sheikh got away with that. Yusuf, now, uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, in your way, you try and keep the Didat uh, legacy alive. Didat's house of Dawa in Lotusville, and many talk about it. Some of the highlights of thus far, you know, you've been, since uh, your father passed away, you've been flying the flag there. Jazakallah khair, we are trying our best. But all of us have a duty. All of us are ambassadors of Islam. And what is the purpose of life? The purpose of life that we are in this dunya to make people aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists and his beloved Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the final messenger of Allah. If we continue just with that in a little way, don't need to be Ahmad did that. Don't need to be any professor. Don't need to have any organization. Everyone does it in his own capacity. Mm. Allah rewards you. Just as well, just as much as he's rewarded Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like those people who passed away in Saudi Arabia, the crane. Mm. Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. I wish I was there, my brother. Please. Not that I will get a million reals. No, not because of that. <coughs> but alhamdulillah, you can never reach a state of that level where you are in ahram. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away your soul. Then again, the stampede. All that is, we say, subhanallah, this is a barakat of Allah. Let me give you an example. We are supposed to a- appear uh, yesterday, my brother. I believe yesterday we are supposed mm. to have been on A. And uh, I think 25th of September. Yesterday morning, I was driving to Peter Marisburg. At about quarter to seven, I get a call from a white gentleman, Mr. O'Connor. He's a, a Catholic. And I know him over the years because he used to help a lot to treat my father with a, with a, with a, a therapy called jet therapy that prevented bed sores. So he phones me on my way to Marisburg. He phones me. He said, Brother Yusuf, I'm sorry, man. I couldn't phone you yesterday when I heard about the stampede. I was feeling so hurt, my brother. I really was feeling so hurt. I couldn't. But I apologize for the Muslims who have died over there. I said, Brother Connor, you have no idea the joy and the happiness for the death of those people. Hmm. He said, what? I said, because every soul is taken by the permission of God Almighty. We welcome that death. I wish I was there to be in the stampede and to have passed away. I wish my children were there. I wish my wife was there. Mm. He got shocked. He said, I never saw it that way. And I continued. I had a meeting at the master's office soon thereafter, about 7.30. Mm. And I met the head of the estate 
at the master's office, Mr. Anand, another Hindu youngster. And the first word that came out of him is, oh, my brother, I heard about the sad news about the stampede. I said, Anand, we are happy. Wish it was me. Oh, I never saw it that way. I never saw it that way, brother. I said, we are Muslims. We welcome. Everything happens by the will of Allah. They, they are martyrs. They are in heaven. They're going to get up on the day of judgment wearing that ahram and shouting, Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika la laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka al-mulk, la sharika lak, la sharika lak. Man, is there a better opportunity than that? Subhanallah. I went, leaving him, I went to the high court at mm. 8.30. I went to meet the clerk of the head of appeals, the head of appeals the high court. Another Hindu gentleman. I met him. And the first words that came out of him is, hey, I had the hat on. He said, you know, I'm sorry about to hear about those Muslims that passed away. Those stampede. I said, brother, don't worry, man. We welcome this. We are happy. It's not like the 9-11. Everyone was crying. Mm. This is the better than the 9-11. Mm. So this gentleman, <laughs> this gentleman told me, Wallah, believe me. He said, I know you are, which didat are you? I said, no, I'm the son of Ahmad Didat. He said, you know, I have got your father's books there and his DVDs. And uh, we found them in my father's locker when he died. Just one year, he's, he's dead for the last year or so. Mm. And uh, we found it in his locker. Did you know that my father, we didn't know that my father died a Muslim. MashaAllah. And... Um, Mr. Vauda, I don't know which Vauda he's referring to, that he arranged the whole burial service for my father. Mm. I said, oh, man, he said, you know, we never knew all these years that my father was a Muslim. He had a hat, he had the kurta, he should silently make his prayer, everything. And we were shocked. I said, what's the DVDs, man, of Didat? He said, I'm going to watch them. Mm. So Alhamdulillah, this is our duty, my brothers. There are people out there hungry to receive Islam. We are not propagating Islam. We are crying. Don't cry. Be, be grateful to Allah that he has given us life, that he, that he has blessed us with excellent parents, mm. excellent children, and the best deen. وَالَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُزَهِيرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا Subhanallah. Yes, uh, Yusuf did that. You know, the point that you make uh, for a believer, I think the most uh, important moment or the most happiest moment for any believer is when the angel of death comes to him and he says, take me, take me immediately, take me away quickly so that I want to meet my creator. As you said, how father said, take. And Alhamdulillah, uh, we pray five times a day. We make sajda five times a day. We Amin. make tilaw of the Quran. We Amin. give zakah. We Amin. give lillah. Amin. We try and help people. We always think the next person is better than me. But the finest moment for us is when the angel of death takes us away because we want to see the countenance, we want to see the wajj of our Creator, we want to see His countenance. Amin, say. Amin. And you know, you say, Fabi So which is it of the favors of your Lord do you deny? And Alhamdulillah, Yusuf, you know, you speak so deeply about dad, you speak so deeply about, you know, person, even if you do that, one word is sufficient. Your father should tell me, you know, better only on hygiene, talking about tahara, talking about your cleanliness, talking about, you know, shaving and things like that, you can do the work of da'wah. I mean, just I just, mean, just on, on cleanliness. I mean. Now, uh, Yusuf, what do you miss most about, uh, you know, about your father or your mother? Something that you miss every day when you get up. You say, wow, I miss this about my father or my mother. What is it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me to be a, a son who <coughs> was able to express the love I had for my father. And what I missed most in my life is that when you enter, when I used to enter the house of my father, the eyes of love used to shower on me. When my parents looked at me, they said, here comes my son. And that, my brother mm -hmm. and sisters who are listening, if your parents can just show you that love, that passion of love, that is so pure that it affects the inner soul and it has affected me to this day. And I'm, I, I'm so, I, can't, I can't get over the gratefulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have blessed me to be the son of my father. In this, in this world, I have experienced children who are disobedient to their parents. I've seen this with my eyes. I've seen mothers who want to die for their kids, but the children got no time for them. I recall the words of Paul Finley. 
where Brother Shafat, you also met this mm -hmm. American congressman, mm -hmm. Paul Finley. And he said in his book, Silence No More, he quoted, and I'm quoting him, one mother can look after 10 children, mm. but 10 children has no time for one mother. Subhanallah. And this is, I have witnessed all this, all these years I've witnessed. What did Jesus Christ say? What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? As a Christian, what did Jesus Christ say? Honor your father and your mother. And whosoever dishonors his father or his mother must be put to death. Open the Bible. Matthew mm. chapter 15 verse 4. What does the Quran say? Holy Quran say. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made me kind to my mother and not overbearing or miserable. Holy Quran 1932. Open mm. and show it to them. Are we practicing just that, my brother? If we give them our parents honor and respect, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers us with equal honor and even better. Subhanallah. So this is what I miss, mm. to continue to honor my parents. I miss that, my brother. Mm. And to this day, alhamdulillah, I'm able to go to the Qabristan almost every day. Almost every day. Why do I go there? Why? Not that they are there. Because of one Quranic verse. Only one Quranic verse. Al-haakumu takasuru hatta zultumul maqabir kalla sawfa ta'lamoon. ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترؤن الجحيم ثم لترؤنها عين اليقين ثم لتسألون يوم إذن أن النعيم because of that one Quranic verse I go to the قبرستان Allah is talking about the قبر that when you are in the قبر Allah will open your eyes and show you he will again open your eyes and show you the third time he'll open your eyes and show you look who has come what will i'm saying to you brother shafat mm. what what open your eyes no as soon as you enter the kabristan the angels go and tap your parents and say ma papa your son has come subhanallah open your eyes and see they have come so therefore my brothers and sisters go to the kabristan go not because the molana is telling you that not because the people are getting punished in the cover. No. Allah only punishes you one time on the day of resurrection. That is the day you'll be punished. Iza zul zilatil ardu zil zalaha wa akhrajatil ardu afqalaha wa qala linsanu ma laha. That is the day of punishment. Not relax. In the cover you are in Lisbon dense. Legal term. Mm -hmm. You are waiting to get the rewards of the children that you left behind. Alhamdulillah, Yusuf uh, beautifully said, and I can see you motivating many this evening. And Alhamdulillah, you know, I can hear yeah, that in you, Yusuf. I can really hear that. And uh, yeah, talking about Paul Finley, the book that he wrote, uh, They Dare to Speak Out. And I remember interviewing him on that. And uh, Christopher Mayhu, I think I made you, uh, the, the book was uh, Publish It Not. Yes. And we, I think we did some roaring sales on that. And, uh, you know, Yusuf, uh, Allah had blessed you also that you traveled uh, I mean, half the world or maybe three quarters of the world with your dad. Some of the most uh, memorable trips that you had, you know, which was the most memorable one with your father? My, uh, it is so many of them, man. <laughs> Allahu Allah, subhanallah, subhanallah, ya Rab. Where do I start, ya Rab? That's mm. what I'm asking Allah, where do I start, ya Rab? Help me. No, some of the trips that I had was uh, really, you know, to walk in the, shed in the shadow of my father, to walk behind him, carrying his bag, Ya Rab, it mm. is amazing. It was, it was an experience that, sure. that is worth a million. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you that um, we had an excellent marketing strategy at the Islamic Propagation Center. Excellent. I don't think anybody, they, if people want to learn about marketing, this is where you go. Go to the Islamic Propagation Center and go and learn about marketing. <laughs> they are the masters. They should be still now the master of the marketing. Inshallah, they are. Now, let me tell you the marketing strategy of, of us. We used to send DVDs and books to all the Arabs in the world. We should post. Our postage bill was how much? Don't tell me, Yusuf. 30,000 rand a month was wow. our postage bill in stamps alone. 30,000. You, you, you had to book. stop me from publishing two burans a month. Yeah, because you, 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 you're too fast for us. <laughs> you're too fast, brother. 30,000 rand a month was that postage bill in 86. Mm. That's a lot of money. Because we're posting books, DVDs. We were keeping in touch with everyone to tell them what we are doing not only ramadan time uh, zakat lillah sadaqa zakat lillah sadaqa brother please man don't 
Come on, market, do marketing, proper marketing. We don't do marketing. We only do marketing for our business. Oh. Yusuf, you know what, uh, that marketing thing, maybe we have to come back because the sister has called in. Gee. And maybe it's, it's a very urgent call because she's uh, listening to us. Let's call, uh, let's talk to Anonymous Sister on line one. Anon- anonymous Sister, Assalamu alaikum to you. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I just want to say, uh, listening to Sheikh Dida's son is like listening to Sheikh Dida. Subhanallah. His voice is there. Allah must reward him what Sheikh Dida did. He must do. He's so much, so much like his father when he talks. Subhanallah. We hear him like his father. Allah. Shukur, alhamdulillah. It's like we got Sheikh Dida back. MashaAllah. He must keep up the good work and he must be strong in it. Jazakallah. It's a beautiful call indeed because uh, Yusuf, you know, this is a sentiment shared, I think, by many. And uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, Yusuf, is, he's got the 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 the, the presence. Uh, I think I'm going to put you on stage with me. <laughs> few, no, but sad, Alhamdulillah, sad, on, on sad, radio, Mashallah, I mean, uh, you, uh, this recording can go through. Talking about marketing, Yusuf. G. I know about marketing. When I got into IPC, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, because I worked with you and I can, I love to share this. And I remember the first assignment that uh, Yusuf Dilat gave me was, he said, Shafaat, I want you to program, I want you to design the Ramadan appeal. Okay, yes, I, won't, yes. I, won't, I don't want to give the secret out how I designed it, but he, he brought everything to me and he threw it at me. He said, come, there's it. And I went through many different uh, manuals and articles and I looked. And alhamdulillah, I picked up uh, certain plans. I gave it back to Yusuf. He said, go for it. This is what we wanted. And Yusuf and I know what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, yes. And then when it came to calendars, Sheikh Didat had this novel idea where we had a picture of the uh, masajid and then we had a Zulu message. Yes. Yusuf, I think I broke I broke records on that. I, I sold over, I think, two million calendars yes. in KZN. And you said, Shafaat, you're overselling you. You know, we can't give you the two and a half percent that you deserve. Yes. But Alhamdulillah, Yusuf, marketing strategy. And it was done in a manner that, you know, you made a Muslim feel worthy of sponsoring that I- uh, that idea or that program. And what Didad gave was value for money. I mean, value in I this mean, sense, I mean, I mean. that cal- uh, calendars were subsidized. Yes. The Quran was subsidized. I yes. mean, Sheikh Didad had reached the stage where he, he could have given it for free. But his idea was better. Whatever you give for free, people don't make qadr of it. They throw it away. Calls are just coming in, Yusuf. Let's go to Brother Munir on line two. Munir, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi. Alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, Brother Munir. Alhamdulillah. How is your health, my brother? Shukar, alhamdulillah. Allah bless you with good health. Allah bless you with good health. You know what I want to tell you about your father? Your father, you know, there was something that was attracting everybody in your father. You know, he was like an attraction. Mm. And to me, he was not only an attraction, he was an inspiration, you know. In fact, he inspired a lot of people. You take, for instance, Zakir Naik. I remember your father saying to Zakir Naik, what I have achieved in 40 years, you have achieved it in four years, you know. Yes, my The brother. inspiration of Amr did that, brought Zakir Naik. You know. Not only him, you know, we had... Uh, your brother-in-law, Hassan Mudir, one day we invited him to our mosque in the yes. 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 Masjid. Yes. And he spoke uh, on the night of Laylatul Qadr. And, you know, it, that was another deed at also, you know, you can see the, the offspring, you can say. <laughs> His inspiration is all over. I will never forget one thing what he told me, you know, and I Gee. keep on saying it to everybody, but I didn't mention who mentioned it to me. Right. But he told me one day, he says, Munir, you know, you should call me Munir. He says, Munir, I want to tell you one thing. Be good, do good, and have no enemies. I mean. You know? And, you know, from then onwards, you, you'll never find me talking ill about anybody or to anybody. And I love anybody and everybody. Even animals, birds, whatever it is. Gee. And I love children the most, you know? I mean. Yeah. It's the inspiration of Ahmad Didat. And I also want to say, if anybody who wants to any DVDs of Ahmad Didat, I have got, I have got quite a few. Jazakallah. What they can do is they can phone me and uh, just supply me a blank DVD and I won't even charge them for it. Shukran, my brother. May Allah reward you for that. Okay, bye. Jazakallah. Jazakallah.
Beautiful call there, Brother Munir. And Alhamdulillah, Yusuf, uh, he says, a madidat was like a magnet. He just, he just drew people. To you. I'm going to read uh, something here written by the late ASK Jumal, who passed away about two or three months ago. He wrote this, he says, uh, Sheikh Ahmadi that passed away on the 8th of August 2005. Born in India on the 1st of July 1918, he came to the Republic of South Africa at the age of nine as a third class citizen. Only an Ahmadi that could metamorphose uh, a standard four or standard uh, six education into a, profes- a professorship, Yusuf, of, of the Bible with, no in- uh, with, with an insight, a discernment and a perspicacity that uh, the world has not seen. And he goes on to say, he ranks amongst the world's greats from a uh, rural, rustic, humble beginnings to the pinnacle of uh, the educational, theological, and academic world. Amadi that was unique. A S K Jumal. Yes, listeners, you can call in. The number is, uh, Yusuf says, uh, they are rolling. If they want to talk, let them talk. It's not all about us. It's about them also. The number is a studio number. Anisi is waiting to take your calls on 0312084564. 0312084564. You can text me on 0731547604. 0731547604. Yusuf, I think it's only fair to mention ASK Jumal. ASK Jumal yes. May I love was, was so very close to your dad. Extremely. And... What I'd like to know, clear this out, ASK Jumal and Ahmad Didat, were they together in Mia's farm? I'm not sure about that. Uh, really. I, I recall father telling me something, but, you know, I, I didn't take it further. <coughs> I didn't ask, you know, where you're in no, Mia's no, farm I know, together. I, no, I know for a fact my father never been to Mia's farm because okay. at that time, <laughs> only the naughty children used to be sent to Mia's farm. You know, if you're naughty, they say, we'll send you to Mia's farm. You become a Hafiz. Mm. You become a Molana. So I, I knew my father didn't have that opportunity of being naughty. But uh, ASK, I, I, one thing I can tell you about Brother ASK Jumal is that mm. um, before he passed away, he slept one night on my father's bed. Subhanallah. The bed that uh, the Malik al visited. I t- he went to Valham and he slept one night on my father's bed. Wow. You and that very few people know that, but I'm telling you that. Oh, you hosted him. I hosted him and he came and he slept and he and and and, and alhamdulillah he 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 loved my father immensely. Yes. My father used to give all his uh, books for editing mm. for uh, to Mr. Jumal and 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 alhamdulillah he, he, his English was superb. Yeah, it was a proofreading yeah, that uh, proof ASK did for him. English was superb. Coming back about uh, the touching moments in my life. Yes. Marketing I spoke about. And and mark we had a structure of Getting, keeping in touch with the Arabs in the Arab world. And one of the Arabs that we wanted to meet was a head of the construction company of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> construction is money. You want to give me a test here? Okay, you, 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 we won't spoil So we sent DVDs to this gentleman and uh, we said, right, we should have got all our tapes. Let's go to Saudi. We went to Jeddah. We met the other guys and this construction guy, we continuously phoned from the hotel. And his secretary picks up the phone and he's saying, okay, we'll leave the message, we'll call you back. Next day, we'll leave the message, call you back. Next day, we got tired. We really got tired. So my father said, Kenny Jawa there, Bulija, in Gujarati, let's move on. Mm. And uh, it was one of those days that uh, after Zohar Salah, please understand that because of the heat in Saudi, we have to sleep over, like a siesta sleep. And uh, my father and, and I both slept in the hotel. And the next minute, the, the knock, the, with a knock at the door. And I opened the door and I saw a Pakistani gentleman with a tob. Uh, his hair wasn't combed or anything of that sort. So I asked him, what can I do for you? He said, is this Ahmad Didat's room? I said, yes. He said, I'm looking to buy VHS tapes. Mm. I'm prepared to buy them. My wife, my children, they are in love with these tapes of his. So I said, come inside, thinking in my mind that I'll give him one VHS tape and then he'll go away. So he sat with me on the lounge. In the meantime, my father got up to wash himself and he p- walked past the lounge and he asked, Asalaamu Alaikum, where are you from? He said, Pakistan. So my father said, Hambi Pakistani hai. I was in the Pakistani army in 59. Mm. I emigrated from South Africa and I went uh, to Pakistan and joined the army. I wanted to become a Pakka Musliman in Pakistan. Mm. So father had a wash, came back. 
And he asked him, uh, what brings you here? So the gentleman said, I need your VHS tapes. So my father said, Yusuf, give him the set of 10. I got shocked. Huh? Give him the set of 10. So I gave him the set of 10. And he said, so he asked my father, what brings you here to Jiddah? Are you giving lectures? My father said, no, we're here on a fundraising trip. We need money to print Qur'ans for the Zulu people. We need to print these books, how the Christians are attacking us. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the greatest crucifixion of crucifixion. We need these books to be funded. He said, then why don't you meet my boss? He said, who's your boss? He said, this is the name. He said, this is the man we're trying to contact all this time. Yeah, can you? He said, no, I'll phone him now. He picked up the phone. He said, Sheikh, I've got Sheikh Didet and his son here. Can you meet them? He said, yeah, bring them to my Cornish uh, villa. Cornish villa, I'm there. He said, come, let's go in his car. Bicharu, small, broken down car. Uh, he take us to this <coughs> palace mm. in the Cornish. We enter the palace in Cornish, in Jeddah. Ya Rab, I've never seen, I've never seen grass so green in my life in a desert mm. and like a waterfall and the ocean comes right and he's got this yacht everything over there and as we walk in the gentleman gives us an envelope my brother i'm going to show you this this is the copy of what was in that envelope mm. can you please read it out to the people yes uh, yusuf uh, there's uh, the organization uh, what's the name of this organization yusuf the national commercial bank and uh, yes i'm looking at this it says um, pay uh, against the checks to Islamic Propagation Center. This was 1.1 million US dollars. Yes. yes. And uh, what year was this, Yusuf? This was in uh, May, uh, November 13, 1988. Yes. Mashallah. Subsequently, uh, how many other checks came like this, Yusuf? Well, this was a <laughs> check that first time in our <laughs> life we held in so our hand 1.1 million US dollar check mm. made out to the Islamic Propagation Center International. Okay. And the head of the, and the name of the organization is right in top, on top. The name of the organization is the, yeah. the Bin Laden, the bin Laden organization. Yes. The organization. Uh, and I'm holding the check now in yes. my hand. So it's from the, this is the guy we were trying to meet, Bin Laden. Mm. Bakr Bin Laden, the head of the empire of construction. And alongside him stood a young man, humble, mm. called Osama Bin Laden. She stood there. And Bakar is telling my father, this is my brother Osama, mm. who's been funded by the CIA to fight the Russians. We said, Mashhamdulillah. Osama turns around and says, Shaq, did that. I've watched your DVD, the American debate, where you knocked heads into the American in his own language, in his own tongue, in his own country. You entered right into his country, spoke in his tongue, and you knocked heads into him. Mm. I watched the debate, Sheikh Ahmad did that. And you motivated me a lot. And that was all Osama bin Laden said to my father. Mm. Alhamdulillah. That evening, Bakr told my father, I want you to come and listen to my brother's lecture. He's giving a talk after Isha in one of these masjids. So he said, okay, Alhamdulillah. So we went, Ya Rab, brother, there was a traffic jam like you have never seen in your life. Mm. This Osama was such magnetic speech he gave. He, he was so articulate. He, for every word he spoke, he supported it by Quranic verses. And the youngsters were motivated to join him and go and knock hells into the Russians. Mm. Here is USA, CIA. Everyone is funding Osama to go and knock hells into Russians because America saw Russia as a threat that they didn't want them to have a ground there. So, you could see that we met a youngster who was great in character, in respect, all aspects of it. So I have immense respect for this youngster. That he was ambushed and murdered without just cause. What does Ob Obama, what does America talk about due process? They believe in due process. You cannot be guilty without due process. But they committed a crime by ambushing a man in his home, picking him up, murdering him, murdering him, and then taking him in the sea, giving him a gusal, and dumping his body in the sea. Where did you see that in your life? People who are dying in the in an aircraft, you're picking the bodies up from the sea, looking for the bodies to bury them on land, 
This is the most nonsensical thing and we're just quiet about this whole thing. Mm. And this shocks me. The Muslim Ummah is quiet. This is the greatest injustice done to a soul that is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here people are raping, abusing, molesting children and they're walking free. I say there's an injustice caused by this American people. Mm -hmm. And, and let, me, let me warn and I stand up straight that Allah will judge the Americans. If he doesn't judge them, then Allah will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah, what he did to them. Because America kills everyone who will tell them the truth and correct their wickedness. They are evil. And that I believe. And I stand by that, my brothers. Whether you disagree or not, Alhamdulillah, this is the beauty of South Africa. The freedom of opinion. The freedom of choice. And I, this is my opinion. Jazakallah. Yes, sir, Yusuf, Alhamdulillah. Stand for Haq. And inshallah, Allah will back you on that. Uh, we have uh, Brother Khan on uh, the line. And Brother Khan is uh, someone that uh, Yusuf Didat early on told me uh, very passionate about, uh, you know, Didat's works, use that. And it made an indelible impression on his life and also, in the you know, enhanced his, uh, his, his uh, living. So let's welcome Brother Khan online. Uh, brother, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and jazakallah for joining us this evening. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my brother. Yes, uh, Yusuf Ahmadi that actually, you know, gave me a small uh, uh, synopsis about you. But inshallah, I would like you to tell the listeners how Sheikh uh, did that, uh, you know, changed your life, uh, Khan Sab. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, Allah Rabbul Alameen changed my life. And Ahmad Didat is an anchor in my life. Uh, one day, my wife was just uh, looking through the books and she came across a book, book which uh, called Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the natural successor to the Christ. So that book is came the Ahmad Didad in my hand, and from that uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala it has changed automatically my life, and uh, everything what Ahmad Didad is saying, what Ahmad Didad spoke about it, it's only about he spoke about the heart, mm -hmm. and uh, there is no there is no nothing the face of the earth. It's only one religion which one call Islam, and it's in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in the Quran say in the Dina in the Allah Islam. So there is no other Deen. It's only Islam, and Allah Rabbul Alamin said. To us in the uh, in the Quran three times. So uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala telling us there is no other deen and I send my messenger. It's only one Islam and we have to propagate our deen. And the most of the most of the Muslim brothers, my brother, this is my request to my all oh, Muslim brothers and sisters. Most of the Muslim brothers, my brother, this is my request to my all Muslim brothers. This is request to, because Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Mubarak, the non-Muslim, they don't know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran telling us, walakin aksar an nas la yalamun. The most of them, they don't know who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mm. So this is my message to my all Muslim brothers. So we in South Africa, we all, they must all get married and convert the people to the Islam and just oh, oh, convey the message and bring them to the Islam and make them better than our, our own mother which one is in, in the house, make them better than our own mothers in Islam and show them the way of Islam. Islam is the beautiful religion. There is no other religion the face of the earth. It's only Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us in the Quran everything, Udu sabili rabbika bil hikmati. And you must invite them the way of the best way. And you must talk to them with the best manner. Mm. But Allah give us everything in the Quran, but we misunderstood the message. So uh, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Rabbul Alameen and Ahmad Dida changed my life and Allah Rabbul Alameen gave him Jannat al -Firdos, and Allah Ameen. Rabbul Alameen give to his family, to everybody, uh, um, um, sabr and Allah accept the use of Dida efforts, what he did for me Ameen. and doing for me for every Sunday. He phoned me, I spoke to him as like my father, I never met him, he didn't see me by faith. And Ahmad Dida been, came in my dream four times. Allah. I never met him, I never saw him. And nothing. And Allah Rabbul Alameen changed my life. And my wife is also from Bloemfontein, Boer African. And she embraced Islam 11 years ago. We've been married for almost 11 years. And I'm in South Africa for 11 years. I didn't even go yet to my country. I didn't see my sick mother. Gee. So Allah knows the best. And I'm doing debating with a Christian, with a uh, seven days Adventists, with the biggest, biggest missionaries. And I'm sitting in front of them. And I am keep telling them, I'm here. Make me a Christian. Mm. Make me a Christian. Show me. I know the Bible upside down. My Muslim brother, there is nothing in the Bible. Bible is, I've been through in a every, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped me with the understanding, not with only with the reading, mm. with the meaning of understanding. 
and there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Bible also say there is no other God only I am the God and I am the Savior there is no Savior and uh, Isa alayhi salam also beautifully say after me is coming which one Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi mm. salam and also in the Quran uh, Surah Saf it's explained uh, Ismuhu Ahmad so he's coming so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given us the beautiful deen but we have to propagate and convey our message and we have to each one of us we have to go out and talk to the people our neighbors our workers our colleagues our friends our families we have to speak to them mm. who is who is our nabi what is islam we have to because we are scared for what we scared we have we born to die so why not we die in the allah way this is the sirat al mustaqim sirat al mustaqim we we hold day we praying and we talking to our rabbul alamin but we don't understand it's three names has been it's it's five time in the in the azan is ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah this is the two the greatest personality name uh, every time been five time and when we go ana atahayyatu ashhadu an la ilaha illallah and there is the third personality is coming ibrahim alayhi salam mm. so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the surah nahl he keeps saying to our nabi karim sallallahu alayhi salam mubarak follow the ibrahim alayhi salam footstep follow the ibrahim alayhi salam footstep he is a khalilullah so allah rabbul alamin explain to us everything to but the quran message understanding is the very deepest deepest so it's very very little people Mashallah. can understand Mashallah. and allah rabbul karim accept our all duas Ameen. and this is a, a moment umma I, i request to everybody Ameen. there is no other way i of life it's only islam 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 is there is nothing yes sir you know uh, kansab uh, uh, prati biki afrikaans hoy uh, fan bry place and poiki khos I I speak African but not very well. Okay. I I can speak African but not very not very okay. like yeah. fluently. Yeah, how by from Melkad then. Yeah, okay. Yes. Jazakallah for for all your beautiful uh, nasiha you have given. I can hear all Sheikh Di that's uh, you know the knowledge that you've imbibed from him you actually have spread it on the radio here. Allah keep you brother and where are uh, you, you are you near Bloemfontein? No I'm I'm staying in Cape Town in Fishhook uh, um, um, in Fishhook this is um, like from Cape Town is almost one hour drive Okay Fishhook I'll be coming to Cape Town very soon on a tour I'll try and get uh, your your details and meet you Inshallah you have to you have to make Inshallah. a um, um, effort to we can see one another Inshallah. and I'm also busy with the Jehovah witnesses I also I have meeting in the next week inshallah I mean Allah rabbul alamin accept our, Ameen. our Ameen. all Ameen. effort Ameen. ان الله اوپن ال دورز امین جزاك الله خير جزاك الله خان صاحب جزاك الله خير جزاك الله السلام عليكم يس سو ذات واز خان صاحب اند از ذا كونفرزيشن جوز اون ليتس جو تو لاين نمبر 2 اند ويلكم انونيمس سيستر انونيمس سيستر اون لاين 2 السلام عليكم تو يو وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته هاو ار يو برادرز الحمد لله اي دونت نو اف برادر يوسف از فاميليار وذ مي بت اي هاف بين تو هيز بليس اوف ريزيدنس وين هيز فادر واز فيري فيري ايل بيكوز اي بروت ا فيو بيبل اند هيز مام الاوود اس ان اند شي اولسو الاوود ذا فورنرز Mm-hmm. Uh, they didn't know the place but i had to you know uh, direct them exactly. and uh, they took photographs i don't know if you still have the photographs these brothers were from maseru yes uh, the two brothers were from maseru and i was also next to your father with a picture taken as well alhamdulillah and i thought i'll just bring it to your notice and exactly. you know what i admired your mom yes. she's so thin but you know what in the in the dire straits of your dad she stood by him to take him then Yes. And you know what I I I didn't know that she had passed away in a short uh, d- you know short uh, while later after your dad had passed away. Yes. Yeah in Lai 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 Wan. Lai 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 Rajan. And you know what may Allah give them genital fertility so he's also give him most merciful. Jazakallah. And uh, I just thought I'll brought it, bring it to your notice. Jazakallah. And if you still have the photograph uh, of those brothers from Maseru Maseru is in Mozambique. Uh, the Maseru is a place of its own. No oh. Swaziland. Swaziland. Oh yeah these brothers were from Maseru. Okay. I don't know which uh, where I only know they from Maseru because they gave me that information. Jazakallah. Mm. All right shukran salam alaikum. Okay. And ma- ma- say ma- hello I yes. want to say also that your dad uh, although he was the uh, 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 not like highly educated Ji. but he had lots and lots of knowledge to share with people jazakallah khair mr allah has given him a lot of knowledge jazakallah all right right jazakallah assalamu alaikum wa alaikumussalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh i like to add that uh, on that uh, my sister said yes i will look for the photos my sister inshallah khair and um, inshallah if you pop in on a sunday i can show you all the albums and whichever is your photo ahlan wa sahlan you can have it because we leave this world we take nothing with us Mm. So the photo is yours my sister. But regarding my mother, I need to uh, I- I- emphasize I put some emphasis on this one. 
My father always used to quote Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the quality of a wife and his fidelity, the fidelity of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he, he wrote this in a book called Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the greatest. And he says, it is a boundless favor. He never forgot his good Khatija. Long afterwards, Aisha, his young favorite wife, a woman who indeed distinguished herself among the Muslims, by all manners of quality, through her whole long life, this young brilliant Aisha was one day questioning Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Now, am I not better than Khatija? She was a widow, old, and has lost her looks. You love me better than you did her? And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam answered, No, by Allah, he answered, No, by Allah, she believed in me when none else would believe in the whole world. I had but one friend, and that was her. And who wrote that? In the Hero and Hero Worshippers, page 76, he wrote that. <laughs> now, brothers and sisters, do you all not forget the word love? Do you all believe in your husbands? That is the question I ask. When you believe in somebody as your husband, when the husband believes in you as his wife, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings a rahmah and barakah. Love is in the air. You know the song. It's still in the air. It will remain in the air. It will not go anywhere. But the belief in one another will carry you through it. I mean, Yes, I'm thinking of a John Pond Young or some young sang that Yusuf. Let's go to the lines and welcome my Sister Shireen. Sister Shireen on line three. Assalamu alaikum to you. Walaikum salam, brother. How are you? Alhamdulillah, sister. Brother, I I was so blessed with this opportunity of meeting our great uh, Sheikh uh, Ahmed Didat at his residence. Um, I went down with some uh, people from Stanger, and you know, didn't we we didn't want to miss that opportunity, and we ended up going to the home. And what a humble home! What a great wife he had. What a fantastic mother. Mm. You know, we had a meal with them. Amen. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, and when we went to, uh, you know, speak to a Chef Didat, you would never have said that, you know, he was in such a state as how we heard, you know, from people, because he communicated with pen and paper and excellently. Mm. Excellently. Amen. You know, his son was there to... Uh, 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 you know, translate everything, you know, write it down and tell us what he was saying. And Alhamdulillah, he had really great words, you know, for me. And my, I have taken my youngest son with me, the youngest one. And shukar to Allah, he's a half year, he's becoming an alim. Mm -hmm. And Mashallah. I think it was the duas of Sheikh Lake, mm -hmm. uh, Sheikh Didat, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, what an inspiring person. Mm -hmm. What a, I, I still, to this day, can never forget you know, uh, that conversation. And, Amen. and you know, when I think of him, I see him the same way I've met him. I mean, I mean. So, Amen. Alhamdulillah, Allah bless his children, Jeez. bless Jeez. his family, and uh, all of you that propagate deen and Islam, may Allah really greatly and abundantly reward all of you. Amen, Amen. Amen my sister. as alaikum Wa alaykum as Allah reward you, my sister. Jazakallah for that, Sister Shireen, and Alhamdulillah, very inspiring words. Guest this evening, uh, Yusuf Ahmadi, that Alhamdulillah, many of you enjoying him. And uh, Anis Ali saying the phones are just ringing off the lines, just saying how they enjoy uh, Yusuf Ahmadi, that. And not forgetting uh, Shabir Basha, who was also D that right hand man, the fax man. I, I recall it was Telex then, Yusuf. And yes, whenever yes. we came to the office, there was Ahmad Didat. Shabir Basha was also a director now of the Radio Ansar Foundation. Oh, I didn't know. Always uh, on that uh, Telex. And Alhamdulillah, I remember you gave me an assignment to do a, a, a documentary, Who's Who at the IPC. And the first interview I remember doing was when I brought in Shabir Hafiz, Shabir Basha, and he started the program off. And Alhamdulillah, Yusuf, but you were the executioner, the director, and the producer. You had some lovely times with us, isn't Oh, it? Alhamdulillah, Hazamin Fadli Rabbi. Hazamin Fadli oh, Rabbi. Yes, Only I'm through the blessings of Allah, every one of them. Beautiful. Iqbal, Isuf. Muhammad Khan, <laughs> Shabir Basha, <laughs> all of these people were great. I enjoyed life. But talking about Anissa, Sister Anissa. Yes. Ali, you said about my mother. You made mention about my mother, the good quality of my mother and the good relationship of my father. 
Where did he acquire that from? For the examples of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, one of the things my father always used to talk about is about a historian, a French historian called Lamartine mm. from Paris. And the words that he wrote about our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, my sister. The words that he wrote, he said if greatness of purpose smallness of means and outstanding results are the three criteria of human genius who could dare to compare any great man in modern history with Muhammad. The most famous men created arms, laws and empires. Only they founded, if anything at all, no more than material powers which often crumble away before their eyes. This man Muhammad moved not only armies, legislations, empires, peoples and dynasties, but millions of men. More than that, he altered the gods, the religions, the ideas, the beliefs and the soul. On a basis of a book, every letter of which has become law, he created a spiritual nationality which blended together people of every tongue and every race. The idea of the unity of God proclaimed amidst the exhaustion of fabulous theologies was in itself such a miracle that upon his utterance from his lips it destroyed all the angel superstitious. Mm. His endless prayer, his mystic conversation with Allah, mm. his death, his triumph after death, all this attest not to an imposter but to a firm conviction which gave him the power to restore a dogma. This dogma was twofold, the unity of God and the immat immateriality of God, the former telling what God is and the latter telling what God is not. Mm. Philosopher, orator, apostle, legislator, warrior, conqueror of ideas, a restorer of rational belief of a cult without images, the founder of 20 terrestrial empires and of one spiritual empire. That is Muhammad. With regards to all standards by which human greatness may be measured, we may well ask, is there any man greater than he? And Allah says in the Quran, Wa inna ka ala azim. Most certainly thou art Muhammad in the highest pedestal of human character. Allah. When you try to act out the role that Muhammad sallallahu laid down, we will never go wrong in our life, my brothers and sisters, in your family life, in your relationship. All of us will be forgotten. Ahmad Didat will be forgotten. My father told me that, my dear son, don't worry about me. Don't write a book about me. Don't write a biography about me. If you love me, promote Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the greatest. It's a small booklet that I've wrote, 63 pages only. Produce that book. There's no copyrights on it. Promote Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Forget Ahmad Didat. Forget Nelson Mandela. They will all be forgotten. But besides Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, beautiful Yusuf and uh, yes, uh, remember asking uh, Sheikh Ahmadi that what was his best debate or best lecture he had given, and this is what he said: Muhammad the greatest. Now, Yusuf, you know earlier on when you spoke about uh, a little bit of politics, you brought in and you spoke about uh, Osama bin Laden and uh, your meeting with him. The Arab Spring, uh, Yusuf, has quickly turned into a damp squib. You know, Egypt in particular was uh, quickly neutralized. Uh, as the Quandul Muslimin and the uh, country's first democratically leader, uh, elected leader, Mohammed Morsi, is, uh, was put behind bars and uh, you know taken out, out from power. Mm -hmm. And uh, amazing thing, uh, Yusuf uh, did that, that that the entire Muslim world has done nothing about it because the man was uh, democratically elected. Uh, yes. Actually, you know, I mean, just put under the, right. the carpet, and uh, here we have a Sisi running Egypt, and the whole the Muslim world has turned into turmoil. The refugee crisis, Libya went down, and then the, we have uh, uh, the, uh, the Yemeni's crisis and the Iraqi crisis. Perhaps your take on this, sir, Yusuf? Yeah, at the moment, you know, uh, the Arab Spring has passed. It has sh shaken up the, the Arab world, and it has passed. And now comes a new spring, the Spring of Hijrah. This is the Spring of Hijrah. Mm. Where refuge, people, refugees are leaving Syria. How many of them? They're going to Germany. I never heard of Germany. Hungary, Croatia. What is all this? Where are these countries popping up from like a mushroom? No, they're opening up the doors. Why? They're allowing 10,000 people to come in. The Muslims are coming into Europe. They're going to invade Europe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's way. It is He. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent this deen and the way he's going to propagate this deen is by hijrah. Syrian Muslims going all over the world, going into Hungary, going to Germany. Syrian Muslims going to go to the United States. Syrian Muslims are going to go to UK. There'll be an invasion of Islam. Relax, my brothers. Rejoice, my brothers. And we worry about what is Saudi Arabia doing. Mm. Did you know that Saudi Arabia has 3 million refugees? But they don't, make, they don't go to CNN and tell you about all that. Jordan, poor Jordan, a poor country that's suffering, has over a million refugees. Libya, Lebanon, Lebanon has a million refugees, mm. a small country, smaller than South Africa. Poor people, but nobody talks about that. You worry about the 6,000 going to Germany and Hungary, everyone you worry about. I said, rejoice, my brothers. Islam is going to spread. Don't cry. Rejoice. Because Allah's plan will never go wrong. Yusuf, you know, you make the point that 3 million refugees, Syrian refugees are in Saudi Arabia. The uh, Yemeni is war. Who's, who's, who's sponsoring that, Yusuf? This is the dirty thing. <laughs> the dirty war. It, it, extremely dirty, my brothers. Let me, let me just tell you. As I said, I said, the evil, the evil <laughs> is America. They kill everybody who will tell you the truth and correct your wickedness. They will kill everybody. Is the Americans. I say this, <laughs> and I stand by this, and I can stand on the rooftop and say this without fear at all. My brothers and sisters, please believe me. When you see the programs on, about Syria, you see your children, your small sisters and brothers getting bombed by these drones, American drones. It's dirty. It is sad. It pains you that these are your Muslim children who are getting killed. Mm. And what they say, what does America say? Collateral damage. Sorry, we made a mistake. So my brothers and sisters, let's get back. Let's get back to the example of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallam. He never used the sword to propagate Islam. He never used the sword. We can conquer because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us to conquer these Americans, promised us to conquer the British, promised us to conquer the French. How? By talk. Mm. With wisdom. And we have it. We've got Muslim scholars on the radio station. I listened to A.B. Dawji as well. Mm. I've just listened to him this morning. He's talking about chicken, uh, Pakistani chicken, all this. I enjoyed it. I don't mm. say no, I enjoyed it, A.B. I know he's going to Syria. Mm. He's going to Spain. He's going to Morocco. He told us that this, 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 this afternoon. Mm. My brother, propagate Islam. Go to Spain and speak to those people and propagate Islam. Yes, sir. Let's go to the lines and welcome uh, Sister Zainab. Sister Zainab. Okay, please lower the volume of your radio there, Sister Zainab. We're getting a heavy feedback here. Okay, I'm sure you're ready now. Sister Zainab, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Amin. Can you hear me clearly now? Yes, Sister, go ahead. Okay, mashallah, wonderful. I'd like to congratulate you all on a wonderful program. Uh, I must say it's very enlightening and uh, very interesting. And most importantly, I was very bored. After listening to both of you, I'm really enjoying the show and uh, I must say propagating Islam is the best way to go. Exactly. And we all should do the Dawah work. It should come naturally to us. Exactly. I just want to say a very important point. Uh, I was in Jidda many years ago and we, uh, we went for Hajj. And somehow we ended up at a Malaysian uh, gentleman's uh, apartment. Yeah. He had the apartment available, yeah. and he said we must uh, use it for a few days. Yeah. Uh, it was a very beautiful apartment, so we agreed and we accepted. Yeah. Then uh, he switched on some DVDs on Ahmad Bida. And I was amazed that he knew so much about Ahmad Bida, and he was just only talking the whole evening, everything about Ahmad Bida and Islam. And it seems as if like the whole of Saudi Arabia knew everything about Ahmad Bidat. Mm. And here in South Africa, we used to hear his name and we used to hear the fact that he's going to certain halls and Ahmad Bidat versus certain person and all that. Yeah. So Ahmad is very really interesting, very really enlightening. And I'm very glad that uh, even today, Ahmad, Ahmad Bidat's name is still alive and he's still able to talk so much about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, more importantly, I'd like to know how many CDs he did cut. And inshallah, if you just can give me one of each, and I'm going to listen to it from now to the day I die. I mean, I mean. Thank you. Jazakallah, Sister Zainab. 
beautiful call, most informed uh, caller. Yusuf, uh, how many yes, CDs are you giving uh, her? Uh, sister, I would suggest that you call the Islamic Propagation Center mm. and speak to Iqbal Isup. And I'll give you the number now. It's 31 306-0026 and definitely this young boy will help you. He's Masha a very Allah. good brother. He will help you. And and there are good people there. There are good people working at the Islamic Propaganda Center who will go out of their way and assist you, my sister. So please do call them. Jazakallah for that. Yes, if you're going to call in, uh, Yusuf is all ears and we all ears too and uh, the number to call is 0312-84564 or you can text me on 0731547604. Yes, sir. Osama bin forgotten, Osama bin Ladin. Yes, sir, Yusuf. Let me go through some SMSs uh, that have come through. This one says, Alhamdulillah, a great guest indeed. He says here, a chip of the old block. Did that still rules. Yusuf, Allah, you're rocking brother. this evening, my man. I'm only the chip, my brother. Jazakallah. <laughs> hey, I'm not <laughs> never the block. I'm never the block. I'm only the chip. Jazakallah. <laughs> you heard that, Hanis. He says he's only the chip. He's not the block. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take that, Yusuf. I, I think that's a good... Uh, 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 Asif says here, who, um, okay, who created uh, these refugee crises, um, g- gave it a massive uh, media coverage, and ruined uh, the lives of millions. Truly, the one percenters have a lot to answer for. And uh, Ahmed Yusuf did that. Jazakallah for your contribution this evening. Can listen to you the whole evening. Yusuf, no, brother. you've you need got to a go power to sleep, here. my brother, because <laughs> the night is there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the night to rest, my brother. The who created this refugee crisis? Mm. I say there is a plan. Wa makaru wa makarullah, wallahu khairu makirin. That is Allah's plan. So forget pointing fingers because our job is not to point fingers, is to react. Mm. What's our reaction? Listen to me. When the, the issue of Osama bin Laden came, the 9-11, how did President Nelson Mandela react? Did anybody care about that? Did anybody care about what, how Nelson Mandela reacted? Mm-hmm. He made a statement. And let me quote his statement. Yes. I opened the statement. He said, President Nelson Mandela, the late President Nelson Mandela said, the labeling of Osama bin Laden as a terrorist responsible for those acts before he had been tried and convicted could also be seen as undermining the basic tenets of the rule of law. 6th of January 2002. This This is Quranic, brother. This is Quranic. Mandela is quoting Quranic statements. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides people. In his wisdom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows why he said that. Those statements were made for me. Mm. That statement of Nelson Mandela is made for me because today I'm in, in the court. I've been taken to court on the basis that I say that he's not an internationally recognized terrorist. Wallah, I'm in court at the moment. I've appeared 26 times in the Durban Magistrates Court. And I'm asking the ummah today, is there any Muslim out there? I'm challenging y'all. Is there any Muslim out there who can come with me mm. to be my witness and stand up in court in front of the magistrate and say that we do not believe Osama bin Laden is an international terrorist? Can you say that? Only Yusuf Didat must say that. Why? Because Yusuf Didat is not, don't want the green card, my brother. I don't need to go to America or to UK. I don't need the pounds. I don't need the dollars. I've got the Saudi Riyals, my brother. And that's the way I'm going to go. No, Yusuf, I recall, uh, I think Shabir will recall this with me also. There was a time when we were there and we had our center named uh, Bin Laden Center. Yes, yes. I recall you took the entire staff members, called us to a meeting, put us in the micro bus and drove us out onto the freeway. And you said, boys, I've got news for you. The news is that I was interrogated for so long and we are going to change the name of the center to another name. You had inside info- information in 1989, Yusuf. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps those who are sincere. If you are sincere in your belief, my brother, do not be a munafik, my brother. Please don't. And my sisters, don't be a munafik. Don't say down America and then you run for the American dollar and you can't do without the American dollar. Don't say that. Don't say that. Because I have seen even the Palestinian marches. I have been to the marches in, in, in Durban. And I've seen a youngster there who cares two hells about his mother. Mm-hmm. His mother is crying. My son don't even come home. He doesn't even bring bread. And he's marching, free the Palestinian, free the Palestinian, dead to America. Salud, what the hell is going on, brothers and sisters? 
What type of munafiks are we? You want Allah's barakah to bless us when we are not so sincere? No. Be sincere in whatever you do, my brother and sister. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. We, we do fall. We do make mistakes. Allah forgives us. This is the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. He's most merciful and not forgiving. But my brother and sister, we won't forgive each another, do we? Mm. We don't do that. So I say, let's get back to the example of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and let's stand up firmly for what you believe. And I'm going to stand up firmly in the magistrate's court, whether they arrest me or not. And I'm going to say, the American consulate will be there, consulate general will be there, to witness what Yusuf Didad is saying, so he writes it down. Mm. So when he enters America, they say, come, my brother, Guantanamo Bay is waiting for you, brother. And I say, no, 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 I won't give you the opportunity. I'm staying here in South Africa. You don't, you don't extradite me from this country. <laughs> Jazakallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Yes, sir. Anonymous brother on line three. Assalamu alaikum to you. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's a nice program. I'm enjoying it. I enjoyed uh, Mr. Dad's father, the late Mr. Ahmad Dad. Uh, exactly. You know, it was very inspirational. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we always enjoyed it and learned a lot in questioning towards Christianity and Islam. But I also find that, you know, this dawah is very important and also uh, dawah among Muslims also is very important because we are also. Many of us don't even know the Kalima properly. We don't even know Amin. to reach Allah. We don't, you know, we're not practicing our deen. Uh, we're falling very, very much in the trap of the Yawad and Masara in all our lifestyles and all that. But uh, nevertheless, I just wanted to ask him about his opinion. There's one thing that concerns me is the Saudis. Alhamdulillah, everybody accuses them of not jumping in, not joining, or anything. But there's also hikmah behind it. Maybe Allah Ta'ala wants it that way because if the Saudis do take a side and get involved in conflict and war, then the Yahud and the Sarah are just too happy to go and bomb to, in Mecca and Medina and all sorts of things. And then what happens to the Hujjaj? How do we go for Hajj and Umrah and all sorts of things? But isn't that also something to, to consider as well? GG, my brother. It's a very, very good question, my brother. And I uh, appreciate you having your thoughts uh, put on air. Uh, brother, it, relax, my brother. Relax. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects Makkah and Medina. Just relax. But uh, regarding the Saudis, don't worry. There won't be a Hiroshima coming to us in Makkah and Medina. Because if they do that, my brother, the whole Muslim world, even you, even the, the this is one time the Sunni and the Tabliki will join in together. Amin, they, they, amin. Everyone will join in together. Whether the Shias, everyone will join together. What? You bomb Makkah and Medina? There will be a world turmoil, my brother. So don't worry. The Americans are not stupid. They're not stupid. Yeah, They're intelligent yeah. people. They are planners. So they know they won't do foolish things. They know do foolish things. They won't do stupid things. We don't things. want a conflict. No, no, they, they won't do that. Don't worry. But they we don't want people game. to be uh, not being able to go for Hajj and all sorts of things. No, no, no. It's not going to happen. Relax, my brother. Relax. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. And he's made it a faraz mm. on those who can afford it to go for Hajj. Now, you remember that. You know, there's one on more thing. G one more thing, brother. Which is that mouth. You know, uh, another thought that comes to me is the uh, late husband, one of the said it once. Yeah. He says, you know, the Arab, who are the Arabs? The family of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if you look down upon them and you uh, look uh, <coughs> badly against them, you are actually doing that to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, if your son can be the worst of a, of, of a person, but you, in the end, it's your son, you know? Yes, so we always let ourselves down by just attacking, attacking the Saudis, you know. Yes. But I, I, I'm not saying that they, they are wrong also because uh, we need people to, to look up to the problem that we are having. No, but brother, but sorry, time, sorry, you... sorry to interject. I need to uh, just explain this to you that uh, when my father went to Saudi Arabia, remember, um, a lot of youngsters, uh, most, mo some of them I know is in prison at the moment who are, and some of them are with ISIS as well at the moment. They used to meet my father and they used right. to tell my father that, uh, you know, uh, uncle, you know, we need to replace the Saudi government. This, 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 <laughs> these are not Muslims. This, we need to replace them. And they, we had secret meetings with them in the hotels. And my father gave them good advice. And he told them, my brother, OK, let me agree with you for a moment and say, let's replace this, these people. Let's replace the Saudis. Let's agree. Yes. Who are you going to replace it with, my brother? The Pakistani? The Bangladeshi? Who, who, give, me, give me a solution. No, no, no. Then they, then they turn around and say, no, Allah will create. No, no, no. Allah won't create. You must yes. create the grounds. Allah doesn't, right. Allah doesn't make oranges just grow from anywhere if he didn't plant it. 100%. Bananas too won't just appear from anywhere. So now let's plant the seeds. 
So who are you going to have there as a Khalifa? Give me your name of your Khalifa. And there isn't, my brother. There isn't. So therefore, just make dua to Allah and let's be practical Muslims. Let's be as blessed Muslims as we can. Forget pointing yes. fingers at others because our, ours are just as bad. We've got problems in our family. We've got children who don't care for their parents. We've got children dumping their parents all over the show. We've got problems in our, our, our lives. 100%. So, you know, Alhamdulillah. If you're looking at the Eidgah, if you look at the Eidgah, there's so many of us and every Eidgah is so full. Amen. If we had to do that four or five times a day, what would happen to this? Belief? We are great Muslims. The South African yes. Muslims are the greatest Muslims I've come across. They don't sell alcohol. They don't sell pork. Yes. We are great Muslims. I salute the South African Muslims. I salute the hujjahs. Uh, the amount of hujjahs we send overseas. The amount of uh, people who go for umrah. We are great. We are the greatest Muslims that I've come across mm. as a community. Alhamdulillah. If, you're, if you are imbibing in alcohol, you think I'll let my yes. son marry your daughter? Yeah, Never. I, I said, yeah, this is shaitan, man. I won't even get, get close. So this are we are good Muslims. We don't imbibe in all these things, my brother and sister. We are great people. So rejoice. Be happy. We are the best of people here. Subhanallah. Jazakallah, my brother, for your contribution. Beautiful. I, uh, I really enjoyed that, uh, you know, the, 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 the uh, conversation you're having. So like you're playing table tennis with the brother and mashallah. Uh, shall I give you the last point? Okay, well done, Yusuf. D that well answered and a lot of passion here. Yusuf Patel says, if every if everyone showed us the power of one, it was the power pack Ahmad D that he shook the world when he was alive, when he was ill, and he still does so in his demise. A tribute to a man of the century. He inspired, he conquered, and placed Islam where it belongs, right at the top. Bin Laden, the West feared. Ahmadi that they will fear forever. My du'as and respect, Yusuf Patel. Jazakallah khair, Mr. Patel. That is, uh, let's read this one. It says, good evening, brother. I am a Hindu. I listen to Radio Al-Ansar daily without fail. Really wonderful and inspiring. How do I receive the English version of the Quran? Quran, I am the, I am the sister of Samir Isa. God bless the uh, beautiful radio station, uh, Vasinta of Mia Bank. Uh, Vasinta can go to IPC. Yeah, uh, Sister Vasinta, um, I have great news for you. Uh, write this number down, 031-306-0026. Ask for Muhammad Khan, and he will see to it that he will deliver this Quran to you. He's offering it free of charge to any Muslim or non-Muslim wanting a Quran the IPC is going to give it to you for free. And they are doing a great job. Subhanallah. Salute them. They are doing a great job. Let's go to line number one and welcome uh, brother Khalid. Khalid on line one. Assalamu alaikum to you. Please lower the volume of your radio when you call in and uh, we get a feedback. And inshallah, Khalid, hopefully the you lowered your volume and you're back on the receiver. Assalamu alaikum to you. Okay. I don't think Khalid Hello. is... Khalid, assalamu alaikum. Hello. Yes, sir, I can hear you. Go ahead, brother. Not Khalid, yeah? Who's there, brother? Shafat is Yunus Parak, Hafez. How oh, are you? Hafez Yunus Parak. They gave you a lovely name, Khalid Ibn Walid, yeah? Okay, how are you, Hafez? No, no, I'm, not the, I'm not a Khalid bin Walid, man. That's no. the soul of Allah. You're an old Mujahid, uh, Hafiz. I've always shared some wonderful moments with you. I, I, you know, when I heard your voice, I can just see Joe Parak. And I make so much of dua for him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill his cupboard with nur. Amin, amin. Amin, amin. We thought about him a lot on his day. Man. Yes, I really yeah. loved that man. I really loved him. He had a lot of time for you. Huh? I know that. Uh, even you too. But, uh, Alhamdulillah. You know, uh, Joe Paduk walked the talk with me, uh, Hafizah. Yeah. Shafan, you well? Alhamdulillah, very well. Uh, I'm very impressed with the Dawah program. Alhamdulillah. I think we have to spread the message. Subhanallah. Amin. But, you know, I think one of the things that, uh, you know, when we talk about Dawah, I, I don't know, I tend to find that there's two areas that I think we could go through still, you know, uh, uh, it's quite a big challenge for me, mm. is that uh, when we do spread the message and we, uh, you know, we get the guys to revert into Islam, I believe that follow-up is, is, yes. is, is the huge challenge. And I've personally encountered this with two or three people that I've been through as well. Because I think, I think... Uh, you know, it's something that we need to look at uh, a more, you know, in a more focused and committed way because they tend to be left alone, and mm. uh, and that's about uh, 
and then you know you think things like you know what the Muslims are not doing anything for us etc etc and the second point I was going to talk to you about was the I think the other way of one of the ways that I found uh, you know very effective in, in, in preaching and giving the message alhamdulillah is through our examples and our actions uh, mm. uh, and uh, I've had two personal experiences with examples and alhamdulillah uh, by the grace of almighty Allah these people then you know took uh, the shahada but I think I think actions of, as as Muslims will play a very very important part uh, I mean we go we got to live as you say we you know walk the talk mm. uh, as you rightfully say and I think you know everything a way of life, the way we conduct ourselves, both in a political, social, economic environment, uh, would really play a very important part. So, inshallah, I, uh, you know, I just just my comments and my thoughts about Dawah because I just finished reading a book now uh, on uh, on the on Islam and you know the global resurgence of Islam and so also nice. the uh, some of the the, the reverts they had mentioned that they had become Muslims. Mm. First of all, of course, by the, submission, the total submission and the monotheism of Allah, but they found that in the communities that they lived, the way they were treated by the people in terms of uh, honesty, trustworthiness, the traders that they lived in in these uh, you know cities in the UK and stuff like that, actually meant that they could uh, you know felt that you know this must be Islam if this is the way that they are running their lives. Alhamdulillah. 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 Thanks, Shafat. Jazakallah for that, Hafiz uh, Yunus Parak, and I look forward to seeing you soon. And inshallah, have a blessed evening. I mean, inshallah, I want to see you soon also. I'll stop you on one of your shows. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah I'm most welcome, Hafiz Yunus Parak, saying uh, follow up is very important, Yusuf D. That and yes, our absolutely. example and actions. And as you said it earlier on, wa atiullah wa atiul rasul, obey Allah and obey his messenger. Before I get you to comment, let's go to Brother Ayub on line number three. Brother Ayub, assalamu alaikum to you. Assalamu alaikum, uh, you, uh, Yusuf Dida. Alhamdulillah, your father was a very good man. Jazakallah. His character was good. Did you come to my uh, father's shop, Kaji Shoe Shop? Uh, he was a, uh, they should discuss about him. When I when I meet him, he always smile. Amin. He never get cross one day. Amin. He knew the Quran very well. Amin. Yeah, Latala, the high stage in the Amin, Amin. He was an example of the community in large. Jazakallah. He knew his Quran very well. My father, he knew my father, Yusuf. Ji. Hafiz Ahmad Sadek? Yes, yes. Where about? Where is shop for? Durban. In Great State. Do you remember yes. him? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Allah must give me a uh, father, Jannah the Fidos. He was an example to humanity. May Allah tell him the high stage in his Jannah. I mean, I mean. He knew the Quran very well. Exactly. He proposed the Islam. Yeah. And I hope that people will fall for his truth as Yusuf. Amin, Amin. Inshallah, Allah must go. You send, you send, you send. Shukran, Jazakallah. Alaikum, Salaam, Yes, Yusuf, uh, the earlier caller, Hafiz Yunus Parak, t- uh, talking about follow up, and he says our example is very important. Wa atiyullah, wa atiyul Rasul, obey Allah and His Messenger, and uh, perhaps the follow up thing, uh, Yusuf. Yeah. Are we failing yes, there? Yes, my uh, brother Hafiz Ab. It what you said is absolutely correct. Okay, we 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 very well geared to convert the the person. But the follow-up is not done because uh, we actually the, the man bec- or the woman becomes a misfit in our society. And, and it's, it's sad. It's very sad because we don't have training for this type of, uh, uh, of, 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 of work that we have to do. There's no training in this, in this field. I'll tell you because my father, uh, we experienced this in, in, in those years. We did experience this. And um, my father used to always tell the, the gentleman, when he becomes a Muslim, let him join the Jamaat. Because the Jamaat guys are the best so far. Uh, please believe me. They are very, very, very uh, uh, obedient in, in, in following the, the, the principles of Islam to the T. Mm-hmm. Really to the T. They, they, they very rarely miss Salah. Like, uh, you know, when the Azan is going, they won't just walk past the masjid and say, Kenya, I'll, I'll pray later on. They go, they, they go in and they'll always drag the new Muslim in. And he'll get used to it. So I absolutely agree with you, Hafiza. No, but we need to gear ourselves and structure. And you can contribute a lot. You should come to the Dawa centers like the Islamic Propaganda Center and help and contribute. I think that that will mean a lot to all of us. Jazakallah Hafiz Yes, uh, well said there, Yusuf. And Yaqut Dawji, good to have you in the studio there helping us and uh, showing us this and that. And uh, young men, I think uh, you gave uh, our our young man, no, 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 Dawji, yes. You know what? It's uh, Yaqut 
Waris Ali, mashallah, beautiful name there. And I must tell you now, I'm in a very magnanimous mood, very generous mood, because Yusuf did that has put a fistful of books into my hands. And he says, Shafaat, every caller that calls in now will be getting this book for free as a gift. Muhammad, the greatest. And it was uh, when you asked Ahmadi that what was your finest work, he said, Muhammad, the greatest. So any ca every caller that's calling in from now, inshallah, still, how many stocks we have? One, two, three. You have about 10 books to give out. Abdul Khalik on line uh, number one. Abdul Khalik, assalamu alaikum to you. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Gee, and to uh, your brother Yusuf Didat. Gee. Uh, my input on this is, uh, my question is, why don't the Radio Al-Ansar uh, play Ahmad Didat's tape uh, on the slot of uh, the this uh, lecture series? Mm, yes. Uh, you know, uh, perhaps it's, it's a very good question because uh, our director, perhaps Shabir Basha, is listening to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I, I, I'm for it. I think uh, maybe, you know, towards in the evening at 10 or 11, we yeah. can have our D that on. And uh, inshallah, he still lives on. And uh, whatever D that has said mm -hmm. is so fresh. And uh, uh, I call it evergreen, inshallah. Good suggestion, brother. We'll, uh, I'm sure the directors are taking note so of it. My radio, uh, Islam, uh, Channel Islam used to play it. Also, you know, yeah, so, I see it, and now they have stopped also. But this is a very good this thing if they play his tape. Yeah, and you he see, was a wonderful man. Gee, he, in, in, in on Channel Islam, I hosted the program on comparative religion. I did it for about seven years, oh. and I called it the Didat Chronicles. And Alhamdulillah, at that time, my brother Abdul Khalik Ahmad Didat was alive, and Yusuf Didat actually took a world space and put it next to his father's ears. So when I came on every Sunday uh, evening from eight to ten. Ahmad that used to actually listen to the programs. That's Jazakallah. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. Gee, uh, do you remember that, Yusuf? Yes, yes. Jazakallah. Alhamdulillah, Shabir. yes. And uh, Jazakallah for your uh, informed call there, brother. Let's go back to... Sure. Sorry, uh, I'll qualify for the book? Yeah, the book is yours. Uh, uh, give your, your, your phone number to uh, Anis Ali. Sure. And inshallah, Fatima Dauji will give you this book on Monday. Uh, not Fatima Waris Ali. Okay. Jazakallah. Uh, Jazakallah for that, brother. Assalamu okay. alaikum. <laughs> Yeah, don't make me laugh, uh, Brother Liakat. I don't know why. Uh, this is not a joke. I had no water left here. Let's go to line number two and welcome Munir once again. Munir, assalamu alaikum to you. Oh, alaikum assalam. You know, this talk is so serious. We're not even talking about the food. All right. What do you want uh, tonight? Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Yusuf, no, what no, we can no, give him? Some kajur? No, just no, just like a okay. Uh, Yusuf, bye. what I want to know is, you know, when Hassan Munir brought a book, which he picked up in, uh, in a library in Johannesburg. And uh, it was written by Robert Spencer. Right. And he mentioned something about our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I responded to that book. Right. And I, I don't know if I gave you one DVD regarding that. Okay, no, I, I can't recollect my brother. Okay, I did send one to Robert Spencer in, uh, in, in uh, what do you call, uh, America. Right. right, yes. And uh, since then I never heard from him, you know. Right, right. Uh, I think uh, because uh, <laughs> Ahmad Dirad was too strong for him. Yeah, alhamdulillah. And uh, what I want to say is, uh, look, uh, uh, have you got anything new? I would suggest this book here, Muhammad the Greatest, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I've yeah. got one of that. Yeah. Um, other than that, uh, no, I, I wouldn't. But uh, pop in on Sunday to my house. I've got a lot of books there, a lot of books of my father's. That you can pick up. I'll give it to you. Not a problem. Yeah, you see, I'm doing a lot of dawa work. Here yeah, too. please do pop in on Sunday. After t between 10 and 3 p.m., I'm in Farlam. Jazakallah khair. It'll be an uh, honor to have you. Yeah, don't worry about giving me one book. I, you can donate. Even a DVD. If you want a free DVD, I'll give it to you. Yeah, you come to my house fine. in Farlam, I'll give it to you. That'll be fine. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tata, my visit, and you get a free, free, free. Alhamdulillah. Yes, uh, reminds me. Uh, let's look at more SMSs coming through. This one says, uh, Bilkis with an SMS. She says, I blame Muslims for the mess we are in. We have abandoned the Quran and the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yusuf Ahmadi. That. Yes, Sister Bilkis, you are absolutely on the point. But as I said, we are good Muslims here. We are good Muslims in South Africa. We are the best. So just make dua and just every one of us do something positive. Speak to your neighbor about Islam. 
And as my brother previously also said that we are, we must practice Islam. And that's quite true. But with all that, we are good Muslims. South African Muslims are excellent. And yes, with regards to my playing of my father's uh, CDs, I 100% support that. Because Ahmad Diriyat had no copyrights at all to his publication, his DVDs, his CDs. They are no copyrights. So go for it because he did it for Sabilillah. For Islam. Yes, and the famous words of uh, Sheikh Ahmadi that Wallahi, if we had the means, we have flooded the four corners. Read that for me, Yusuf. Open order. We grant you an open license to produce or translate into any language this booklet, as well as every other publication of ours. You may publish them for sale or for free distribution without any prior permission. We ask for no royalties or copyrights. Wallah. If we had the means, we would have flooded the world with our free literature. And that is our job. And what's the book about? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the greatest. Peace be upon him, the greatest. And who is talking about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the greatest? Lama Teen, Michael at Heart. These are people, Mahatma Gandhi. These are people talking about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the greatest. And the book that you're going to collect from Al Ansar. The French translation of that book is banned in France. Mm. Yusuf, thus far this evening, we had so many positive comments and so many people, you know, telling it as it is. And uh, this one, uh, perhaps you don't have to comment. It says, Adil says, perhaps Didat was a showman. He loved the stage and rubbing shoulders with the Arab elitist and the local Lani's. How would you react to that, uh, Yusuf? Alhamdulillah, but he was humble, my brother. He was not arrogant, my brother. He came in with 18 million rands into South Africa and didn't ask for one cent commission. He was paid a salary of 5,000 rand a month without any commission. Today you ask Islamic organizations, you go on a collection drive, how many percent commission I'm going to get, my brother? You know, from the donation. It's haram, man. It's haram. You are paid a salary to collect money. You are paid a salary. Don't ask for commission. It's haram. 18 million rand, how many percent uh, did that entitle for commission? Mm. No, my brother. When you work for Allah and His deen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you and He'll reward you over and over again. More than money can buy. When you have a kidney failure, you think your money will help you. Wow. When you get cancer of, 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 of the womb, you think money will help you. Mm. No, my brother. It will only ease your pain a little bit, but it will not cure you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cure. So work towards Allah and work towards the one who he loves. Show Muhammad joy Allah. to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam five times a day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making you to praise Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ashhadu anna Muhammad oh Rasulullah. Five times a day. Just do it once, man. Do it on your own without the azan. And you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you. You are witnessing Yusuf did that when he does that. That he gets rewarded. You're witnessing that. That I can stand up in the court, in the in the Durban Magistrates Court, and stand and say openly that Osama bin Laden was not a terrorist, is not a terrorist, and he's my friend. Subhan and I love him. And may Allah grant him Jannat al Firdaus. I mean, because he died a Muslim with Shahada in his mouth, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. So he died a Muslim. And he will wake up on the year of Qiyamah with me and you. Mm. He will wake up together because. We are, work, we are wake up in front of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, Yusuf, I liked what you said. Uh, and uh, Yakut is asking me, how much did you earn, uh, Brother Shafa'at, when you worked at the IPCI? And uh, perhaps Yusuf, as he was one of the ones that used to sign my check, he'll tell you how much I earned. He's showing your fingers here. I think uh, it was two or three thousand a month. Uh, okay. Or, or one five. I, I, I please help Imagine, me. Imagine, uh, being his editor, he, he has the gall to tell you that he was paying me one five a month. But Ahmad did that earn five thousand. All right, I'll tell you what I earned. I got a blank check from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He could be giving me one five, but Allah gave me a blank check. And Allah told me, Shafa'at, you write the figure. But in Yusuf's eyes, it was three or two. It was, I mean, it couldn't even pay the installment of my micro bus that I had just bought. Yes, right. But Alhamdulillah, the barakah that Allah gives you, Yusuf, and you said it beautifully. And I, at that time, I didn't know father was earning 5,000 because when I first came in from, I was working for Daily News when I joined the IPCI yes. as editor. And I was earning there this figure i'm showing it to like a three three grands and 89 your father offered me five thousand and i said yeah sheikh you pay me what uh, the daily news pays me because I'll, I'll do the work for islam and your father loved me for that and alhamdulillah the barakah of working under sheikh amadi that getting into the dawah field 
I got into radio because of IPCI. Mm-hmm. And mashallah, to have you here. And I, I look at the love we have, the bond we had, even the bond that I had with, with your father. The day when he passed away, I was given the privilege of announcing the funeral on satellite radio. Yes. And we carried the funeral right from the morning, right till the evening. And who was standing with me when we put your father's cover? Uh, put him in the cover. Mufti Meng. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Who made the Janaza Salah? Mufti yes. Meng. You remember when father was put in the cover, the lights went off. What we saw, Yusuf? We saw his Janaza there. It was glowing. It was glowing with lights off. And Mufti Meng told me, Shafa'at, there goes a wali. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him in the washing machine and made him pure, pure, pure. Amen, amen. It was a moment when Verlum became a mini Makkah. You remember that moment, Yusuf? Perhaps what went through your mind when you saw so many people coming through? Firstly, the word take, mm. I couldn't get over. Because I was the best in communication with my father. With his breathing eye movements, I was the best. And first time in my life, I was knocked out. Mm. And I didn't know. So that shocked me. And secondly, I was honored not to even carry the janazah of my father. Mm. I never carried the janazah of my father at all. Mm. And because I did, I, I, didn't, I did that because I gave people the opportunity to do that. To carry my father's janazah. I carried my father while he was alive. I carried him from the bed to the lounge. I used to bath my father. Mm. So I said, I said, Alhamdulillah, let them do the gusal. Let them carry my father now. So I was very relaxed. But I need to tell you about Mufti Ismail Mink. I need to tell you about that. Since you touched that subject. One day Mufti Ismail Mink called me on the cell phone and said, Brother Yusuf, can I visit your father? I said, yes, Sheikh, where are you? He said, I'm outside, but I just want to come in for a few minutes, but I need permission to come in. <coughs> so I said, come, where are you? Please come in. And he walked in. And here comes, I have, alhamdulillah, a very handsome young man. Mashallah. Uh, I, and we used to, my father used to listen to his talks on Channel Islam, on Aral Ansar as well. He should l- listen to his talks. So Mufti Mink, so I said, Papa, Mufti Mink is here. So my father said, communicate. And he, my father quoted the Quranic verse, and he, he mentioned the word, Kaumul Ludda. Allah is, is describing this, a group of people who are Kaumul Ludda, contentious people, who, dis, who, who denounce Allah. So my father is asking Mufti Meng, who are these contentious people today? Who are them? Allah referring to today. 1400 years he referred to these people. Who are these people today? And Mufti Ismail Meng, he started giving a tafsir to my father. And my father began to enjoy it. And he was really enjoying it. And the next minute I heard the buzz of Mufti Ismail Meng's phone ringing in his pocket. And he put his hand in his pocket and he switched it off. He just triggered it. And he continued giving the tafsir. And again the phone gave a buzz. And again he put his hand in his pocket and triggered it. And the third time he, he gave a buzz. And I, and I told Mufti Saab, please stop. Papa, can we ask Mufti Saab? Can I give him the permission to pick up this phone? Because he was only here for five minutes and now we have taken away half an hour of his time. There may be other people waiting for his smile, Mufti Mink. So I said, Mufti Saab, pick up the phone, brother. Pick up the phone and answer it. We give you permission to answer it. And he took the phone out. And he told me, my brother, I'm standing before the soldier of Islam. How can I answer the phone in front of him? If I had a meeting with President Nelson Mandela, you think I will answer the phone? Today, we Muslims, if you had a meeting with Jacob Zuma, you think you'll answer the phone? No, boy. Uh, don't cook, don't put too much salt in the curry. You think you'll answer? Or don't, uh, containers, let those containers come through. In front of President Zuma, President Mandela, you won't do all those things, my brother. So you'll respect a non-Muslim who is a, who is a leader. But Ahmad did that. The soldier of Islam. That is the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded Mufti Mink. Mm. He rewarded because how did he reward Mufti Mink? The day my father passed away, Mufti Mink just landed in Johannesburg from, and, uh, from Saudi and he was going to uh, uh, go to Zimbabwe. And on the way, somebody told him, did you hear that Ahmad Dida just passed away? And he phoned me immediately from the airport. He said, Yusuf, what time is the janaza? I said, after Asar. He said, can I come? I said, ahlan wa sahlan, please come. And he came and Allah made him Subhanallah. to read the Janaza Namaz. Yes, sir, Yusuf, you are touching many souls uh, this evening. Uh, this one reads from Mulana Abdul Rahman in Peter Maddisburg. He says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am uh, out of the city but have just been informed that Yusuf Didat is in the studio requesting someone who will stand up 
with him to say that Osama bin Laden is not a terrorist. I am ready to stand up with him. Amin. Molana Abdur Rahman from Peter Marisburg. Yes, and even uh, Yaqat Waris Ali says, I will join uh, Yusuf Ahmed. Wallah, my brother. Wallah. Wallah. May Allah reward you. May Allah bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring barakat on your whole family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant everything that you ask for. Amin, Ya Rab. Please accept the duas of the brothers who are prepared to stand for a Muslim brother. My brother, I definitely need you. Wallah Azim, I need you. I really need you. I want you to come up and join me and let's stand up in Magistrates Court and tell them that without due process, no man can be guilty. Without due process, when you don't you don't charge a rapist for being guilty without due process. You don't charge the man who shot my two brothers in the pocket without due process. He's not guilty. Why do you not allow due process to follow on Osama bin Laden? Mm. We'll allow due process and then execute him. And I say, you all have done something. But without due process, you execute a man, an innocent man. Is that justice? And you are the fathers of democracy, Mr. Obama. You are evil. You got blood on your hands. I can stand up and tell that to, to, to the American embassy. But our Muslim brothers can't say that because we need to go to America. We need the green card. So now, Allah's card is more greater, my brother. So, Jazakallah khair for stand effort. Please do. Please do. Give your address down and I will contact you. Please leave your address with my brother um, and I will definitely contact you. And please believe me, you will stand next to me in a witness box. Yes, uh, and uh, you know, uh, Yusuf, uh, the, the point is made that without due process, why didn't they allow a good court case? I mean, even same with Saddam Hussein, he was executed. Same with uh, Muammar Gaddafi, executed. Osama bin Laden, bring him to court and let him talk. They did that but to an American citizen, al -Alaki. He was an American citizen. They called him, they, they, without due process, they killed him. So what are you talking, my brother? They are the ones who want us to follow due process when they themselves are munafiks. That's, can you stand up and tell them that? We are afraid of the American, my brother. They got drones. They got the army. They can fly over the Atlantic and knock hells into a Muslim country. You know what it's like flying over the Atlantic? You know what it takes to fly over the Atlantic? People must eat food, go toilet over the Atlantic. And they go and knock hells into a country, our country. And what we say? Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Allah says, Ya ayyal muddassirukum fa'anzir. Oh, you were wrapped up in a mantle, you Muslims. Arise and deliver the warning. Allah has given them. No, Musa and them are not coming back, my brother. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was the last and final messenger. Now it is for us to continue with the deen. Alhamdulillah. Yes, uh, Yusuf. Uh, this message from uh, Razak, A. Razak Khan. He says, Salams, is it possible to give uh, me, brother Yusuf D, that's contact number or address? Jazak Allah. I think, Yusuf, uh, it's only fair because many want your... It'll be an honor. It'll be an honor to give you all, my brother. Number 082. Six seven zero one six five two. Repeat that, Yusuf. O eight two six seven zero one six five two. My brother and sister, I don't have a BlackBerry. I have a small hundred and knock your phone. <laughs> don't clog me up. I don't have a WhatsApp. I don't have all these things. I don't. I'm just simple, and I'm happy where I am. Wallah, believe me, I'm happy where I am. It's just simple. So please, just have my number, and you can just SMS me your details. SMS me your pure box number and I will write to you. Believe me, I will write to you and say Jazakallah Khair. MashaAllah, Yusuf, uh, really uh, noble cause will get noble uh, soldiers around you, inshallah. Anonymous brother says, uh, he says, uh, Brother Yusuf, why is Zakir Naik so robust and arrogant? He acts like a grand mufti issuing fatwas left, right and center. Yusuf? My brother, Always remember the difference between my father and other Islamic scholars is my father had wisdom. He was an old man. Unlike me, I'm still young. I may not have wisdom. I may be rude at times. So forgive me for my rudeness. For, forgive me for being so illiterate in that sense. So also remember, Zaki Naik is doing a good job. Whatever he's doing, la in shakartum la azidan lakum. Let's make sugar what he's doing. But he's human. He will fall. He's not a prophet. He will fall. He's not some of our ulamas. Even our ulamas fall. So, brother, he will fall. Yes, 
He's a young man. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him wisdom. He will give him that wisdom that Musa alayhi salam had, Suleiman alayhi salam had, Ibrahim alayhi salam had. That is the wisdom we need to, to pray for because he's a good man. He's doing his good, but he will fall by the wayside. So let's not kick him when he's down. Let's not kick him. Let's lift him up because he's our brother. And we will carry his janazah when he's dead, my brother. Mm. Nobody else will carry his janazah. So therefore, brother and sister, be simple, be humble. Inshallah, Allah will give him wisdom. Yes, he's a young man. And Alhamdulillah, he has achieved a lot in this world. Mm. I've just got, I just got his profile, his latest profile book. Just 10,000 copies of his profile to print. I found out last week to print 10,000 copies of his profile for the paper alone is 1.2 million rands. Just the paper to print the profile. I mean, he has, he just received a million dirhams from uh, the Maktoum family. Okay, I disagree with the Maktoums. They've got racehorses in UK. They're doing gambling. But still, Alhamdulillah, they gave a million riyals to this man. In some, some way or the other, Islam will benefit. Let's look at the bright side. Islam, and he's liable for zakat on the million riyals, my brother. Uh, Maktoum may not be paying zakat, but Zakir have to pay zakat on the million. So Alhamdulillah, some Muslim will benefit. So therefore, let's be positive. And you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change people. I, 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 I cry with you, my brother, on the arrogance of our youngsters. I do cry with you. Jazakallah, mm. my brother. MashaAllah, yes, uh, Yusuf, I uh, remember the Maktoums. I think they big in Dubai. Uh, this message says, Brother Shafa'at used to be a bit skeptical of Didat's methods. It was your shows on CII, the Didat Chronicles, which got me addicted to the marhum. Allah bless you and also bless uh, Sheikh uh, Yusuf Didat, who's giving us a wonderful evening. Uh, you ready? You're giving us a beautiful evening, Yusuf. I'm nobody, my brother. I'm not a sheikh. I'm not a scholar. I'm nobody. Please understand that, my brother. But we all are somebody. In the, in the, in the sight of Allah, we are blessed. Please believe me. We are greater. We are the best of creation evolved for mankind. Ta'muruna bil ma'arufi wa tanhuna anin munkar. We enjoy what is good and forbid what is evil. And we believe in Allah. Now when we believe in Allah, we will show respect to our elders. We will show respect to our parents. We will not be arrogant. But we will always fall by the wayside. And Allah will always lift, up, lift, lift us up and help us. So Jazakallah khair. I'm not a sheikh. I'm just a son who has been blessed by a great father. And a mother. That's all I say. Yes, sir, Yusuf, as you said, uh, you were in the company of, uh, you know, when you look at uh, the Didats, and you know, the, the story goes that Sheikh Ahmad Didat started the Islamic Propagation Center. Then he went to, uh, Alhamdulillah, to Brema. We'll talk about that. Let's take Anonymous on line number one. Anonymous, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, brother. How are you, Mr. Ishu Bidat? Ameen. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You know, uh, Tafat Bhai, I'm the, I'm the first, before I go comment, let me, I'll tell you, I'm the foreigner. So if I'm English, it's uh, not so good. So if I make comments on things, if people don't understand, our listeners don't understand, I'm asking the story. Make me laugh. But you see there, Mr. Tafat Bhai, you listening to me? Go ahead, brother. Yes. Yeah. You see the Jackie Nair at the moment in the world, in from my eyes, he's doing the best work on the Dawa. Best, best way in, in India. What he's doing, I'm telling you, top job he's doing in, in there. The person is not arrogant, but his acting looks some acting is look like a like a me friend. You see in the Bombay way he's running the stema, there's what he's doing the function. In the middle, uh, how many people is there and sitting and relaxing and quiet. Sometimes the Bombay police get stopped. So the Muslim people is so much Muslim people and listening quiet and nicely. You know they they, they get shocked like it. So at the moment I'm telling you so my comment is this: is the Jackie Nair is the best doing what work he's doing in India. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. I listening. See one day he is giving the, like a, he said my book. So somebody is a non-Muslim person is going to attend his program. So so many Muslim people meet him on the way. And one of the imam of the masjid, they told him, why are you going there? This is a wrong way. A lot of people, from that Hindu, Hindu non-Muslim person, he went there. Then he had the question and answer. And some people, he did the pamphlet. Mm. 
राइट यू डोंट गो दे तो जाकिर नायक मेक दुआ स्पेशली दैट पीपल हु डिड द पैम्पलेट अगेंस्ट हिम इट इज अल्लाह दी फॉर मी द पैम्पलेट बिकॉज ऑफ द सम टाइम द पैम्पलेट हेल्प यू टू पीपल गो मोर दे यू नो दाई दे डूइंग द पैम्पलेट Mashallah beautiful beautiful brother Jazakallah we running out of time but uh, we got the gist of your your message there that you say alhamdulillah Zakir Naik uh, doing uh, splendid work and alhamdulillah Yusuf has uh, this put the uh, colorful book in front of me that uh, is a couple of millions it's going to cost to publish and it's already published Yusuf it was uh, alhamdulillah an experience having you you know it's amazing that every time we have a program there's another flavor to it I mean this to the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his blessings alhamdulillah i think it's a blessings very important mm-hmm. that uh, uh, you know many of them have sent in messages jazakallah to you you and you and also liaqat for coming in and uh, the young man anis ali doing uh, splendid work this evening uh, as i said he's focused all the time I mean, yusuf you driving all the way from umshlang jazakallah khair we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala south coast north coast you going to i'm going to south coast exactly. so inshallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a pleasant I mean. trip Yusuf uh, special duas for papa I mean you should call him papa yeah. and I should call him uh, Sheikh Ahmed did that exactly. for the privilege working with him it was uh, I think the duas that he's given us that uh, today that we can uh, carry the flag of I Islam mean, I mean, inshallah I mean. to the four corners of the globe your parting words Yusuf do dawa and that is all I got to say do dawa let's talk let's you, talk man stop yes. talking stop talking yeah. the tongue is the only organ of the body Let's get sharper from use. The more we talk, the better we become. Yes. So go ahead and talk. And talk the truth. Yes, and uh, from uh, Yusuf and I and the team, till we meet you again, we bid you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam.